Hi, my name is Jeremy Woods, and today I want to talk to you about navigation components on every screen size. In 2021, the Android X navigation component added the navigation compose module. The navigation compose module allows you to navigate between composables while taking advantage of the infrastructure and features already offered by the navigation component with other components such as views and fragments. Navigation Compose consists of three main parts. The navigation controller, which manages the state of your navigation. This is how you navigate between different destinations and it also maintains the back stack. The navigation graph provides the map for your nav controller. This is where you define all of your destinations and how they relate to one another. And the nav host, which is what we will focus on today. So what is a nav host? The nav host is a bounding box container for the part of your UI that should be considered part of navigation. This normally takes the form of a single composable destination, such as a screen that takes the entire space of the nav host. For example, looking at this implementation of a scaffold with a nav host along with the image of a device, the highlighted portion represents the container that is the nav host and where the content from any composable destination will be displayed. So a destination being shown in the nav host cannot take up only part of the nav host. If you want destinations to take less space, you have to make the nav host itself take less space. The exception for this is what we call a floating window destination, which includes components such as dialogues and bottom sheets. But those are still considered a destination of the nav host. They just have their content displayed in a completely separate container floating above normal composable destinations. The nav host consists of everything that navigation is responsible for showing on the screen, but oftentimes navigation interacts with components outside of the nav host that navigation is not responsible for. This includes things like the top app bar, bottom navigation, navigation rail, and a drawer layout. Generally, we can identify things outside the nav host as something that remains on the screen even when the destination changes. Let's focus specifically on the bottom navigation and navigation rail components. Both of these contain different menu items that users can select to indicate to navigation that they want to navigate to a different destination, but they are presented in different ways. The bottom navigation is a menu that is presented at the bottom of the app. For compact width window sizes, you should use a bottom navigation bar. The navigation rail is presented on the side of the app. For medium and expanded width window sizes, such as tablets or foldables, you should use the navigation rail. Both of these components connect to navigation in a very similar way. When implementing a bottom navigation component, start by declaring your nav controller. This will be our hoisted state and allow us to connect the bottom nav to the nav host. Next, we will use the scaffold component and define our bottom navigation composable within the bottom bar parameter content. This allows us to avoid any screen formatting and ensures that the bottom navigation is in the correct location. Then within the bottom navigation, using the hoisted nav controller state, we get the current destination. We won't go into detail here, but we can assume that icons is a list of items that helps us link each icon in the bottom navigation to a destination in the nav host and using the item along with the current destination, you can determine the correct state of the bottom navigation. Finally, in the content of the scaffold, we implement the nav host, passing in the same hoisted nav controller used by the bottom navigation. So whenever the state of the nav controller changes, both the bottom navigation and nav host are updated appropriately and they remain in sync. To implement a navigation rail, we just need to change a few things. Instead of a scaffold, we use a row, replace the bottom navigation with the navigation rail, and the bottom navigation item with the navigation rail item. Then our nav host needs to be defined as the next item in the row instead of in the scaffold's content block. With that, we've successfully gone from bottom navigation to navigation rail. We now have implementations of both the bottom navigation and navigation rail, but as it stands, there's a bit of duplicated code. Let's see if we can clean it up a little bit. Both functions get the current destination from the nav controller. They also need the nav controller in order to navigate in response to some on-click event. Instead of passing down the nav controller, we will follow best practices and keep it hoisted. So we'll extract out the destination and the lambda for the on-click event. 
The other major part here is the nav host, which depending on the size of your graph can get pretty large. And it would be much nicer if we only had to declare that once as well. Let's extract out our bottom nav implementation into a composable function called bottom bar layout. This takes a destination, an on menu item selected function, and a content lambda function. In the lambda of our scaffold, we invoke the content and everything else remains the same. Now, how do we call our new function? The nav controller piece is easy. We just create that using remember nav controller and pass it in. For the nav host, if we just pass it into the content portion, we would still need to implement the nav host every time we call a new function. So we need a way to extract it out and ensure we use the same nav host across different function calls. For this, we need to declare the nav host inside of a movable content of function. What is movable content? Let's say you have a composable lambda that you use multiple times during a single composition. Each time you use that lambda, it is a new instance, unaware of any preserved state from the previous calls. Placing that composable lambda inside of a movable content wraps it in another lambda that keeps up with the state of the original composable lambda. Now, using the new lambda, the state of the composable lambda is preserved each time the lambda is executed. Movable content of is an experimental API at a composed version 1.2.0. It allows state to move within the composition by converting the composable lambda into a lambda that moves the state and corresponding nodes to any new location it is called. When the previous call leaves the composition, the state is temporarily preserved, and if a new call to the lambda enters the composition, then the state and associated nodes are moved to the location of the new call. If no new call is added, the state is removed permanently and remember observers are notified. For this, we can declare the nav host inside of a movable content function. Movable content allows us to declare the function just once and whenever the variable holding that function is called, Compose will continue to use the same object. So our calls to the bottom bar layout simply calls our nav host function as part of the content. We can do the same for navigation rail. Define a navigation rail layout function that takes a destination, an on menu item selected function, and a content. And keep everything in the function the same, only replacing our nav host implementation with a content invocation. Now that we've simplified our implementations of both functions, deciding which one to use is straightforward. Using a when statement that takes into consideration the width size, if the size is compact, we should use our bottom bar layout. Otherwise, our screen size is considered medium or expanded, and we should use our navigation rail layout instead. Since these components are outside of the nav host, they are all considered external state and have to be managed separately from navigation, which is why we need to hoist the nav controller. In the future, with the use of shared elements, it will be possible for these components to be part of the destinations and just shared between destinations that care about them. We've now taken care of the components outside the nav host and ensured that we always use the proper components no matter the screen size. What about inside the nav host? Inside the nav host consists of anything within our bounding box. So any interactions you do as part of creating your graph or interactions within the composable destination that is part of your graph, each of these composable destinations should be able to handle every screen size. Adapting each destination to different screen sizes might be as simple as swapping out a list for a grid, but sometimes the best use experience requires larger changes like adopting a list detail view. A list detail view describes the implementation of two screens, a list containing multiple elements, and a detail screen that corresponds to each of the elements in the list. With the compact window, these items are thought of as two different composables. A list of items for the list screen, and item detail for the detail screen being stacked on top of each other with only one content showing at a time. The user starts out on the list. And once the item is selected, the window contents are replaced with the detail view. But with larger window, both the list and detail content are displayed at the same time in one list and detail composable. The list and detail composable combine both the list of items and item detail composables together in the row, so they are displayed side by side. When the user selects an item on the list view, the detail pane updates based on the item on the selected item. 
Now, how do we combine both of our solutions to ensure we can handle every screen size? What if we were to combine both solutions into a single composable, say, list detail route that selected the proper destination based on the given window size? If we have a large window size, we display the list in detail composable. And if not, we display either the list of items or item detail composables. Which one we display depends on whether there is currently selected item or not. We now have a responsible composable destination, but there is a problem. What happens if we are inside our list detail route and the user wants to go back? Well, if we are using an expanded window size, our list and detail are inside the same composable. So pressing back should go back to the previous destination in the stack. But when using the compact window size, where the detail screen replaces the list screen, pressing back from the detail screen should take you to the list, not the previous destination. Because of our separation inside the list detail route, if we are on a smaller window size and the item detail composable is displayed in the nav host, we can set a back handler to intercept back press to make the item detail composable return to the list of items composable. This type of state manipulation in the nav host allows our app to achieve the proper responsiveness no matter the screen size. But wait, now that your list details are all set up, what if you are on the detail pane and you want to navigate to some content that replaces your item detail composable? This is a rare scenario where you should use a nested nav host. By making the detail pane its own nav host, you can define the destinations that should only be reachable from the detail screen and allow for the maintenance of a separate backstack. If you wanted to deep link to a destination in the inner graph, you would need to find a deep link destination in the inner graph as well as on the parent destination that is hoisting the nested nav host. This ensures that the outer graph has a path to the destination that you are attempting to deep link to. Here we covered a specific scenario where there are a few things you should be doing in general. The Android X Compose Material 3 library offers the window size class APIs, which allow you to determine the width and or height of the current composable and classify it as compact, medium, or expanded. Ensuring you are properly hoisting state will allow your app to disseminate the proper information no matter which composable is being displayed at any particular time. Using the lazy vertical grid, lazy column, and lazy row APIs will help you take advantage of Compose's built-in support for handling adaptive layout without needing to do extra work on your part. Check out our other talks like Compose Implementing Responsive UI for Larger Screens talk for more ways to make your composable responsive. Again, these things are general practice for Compose and not specific to navigation. So we need to manage the external state outside of our nav host by using the given window size to determine the proper navigation element to be displayed. In conjunction, we should also ensure that the inside of the nav host is configured so that each destination is responsive as well. By doing so, we can develop apps that can truly use Navigation Compose on every screen size. Please check out our content on developer.android.com, and thank you.